Welcome to the Care Clinic Pod. I'm Emma, and this is Jones. Hey, everyone, and welcome back. You know how we're always talking about keeping our brains sharp. Always. Well, today we're diving into something that can actually help your brain rewire itself. Oh, really? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And get this. It's called BDNF. I'm Emma, by the way. I'm Jones. Nice to be here. And Jones is our expert to help break down BDNF. So what is BDNF exactly? BDNF is brain-derived neurotrophic factor. You can kind of think of it like... um, Like a brain booster. Yeah, like a superfood for your brain. It's like, imagine a fertilizer not only helps your brain cells survive, but it also helps them grow and make new connections. So having more BDNF basically means... What, like, we're going to be smarter? Well, it's more like BDNF helps with your brain's processing power. Oh. It was a big part in this thing called neuroplasticity. It's your brain's ability to change and adapt over time. So the more BDNF we have, the easier it is for our brains to learn new information. Exactly. And there's some really cool research that backs this up. Oh, really? Yeah. From the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, it shows how BDNF actually works. Oh, wow. I'm all ears. So one of the key things BDNF does is it helps your existing neurons survive. Okay, so it's like keeping the brain cells we already have healthy. Yeah, exactly. But it gets even more interesting. BDNF also helps grow new neurons and synapses. Wait, so it's not just maintaining what we already have. It's helping our brains create more connections. Exactly. It encourages your brain cells to like sprout new branches and connect with each other. So it's making the network in our brains even stronger. Exactly. More adaptable, too. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And those new connections, that's the foundation of learning and memory. Oh, that makes sense. There are studies that show if you block BDNF, people have memory problems. Oh, really? Yeah. It shows how essential BDNF is for your brain to function. So how do we get more of this uh, brain fertilizer? Well, one of the best ways is exercise. I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) I always feel so much more focused after I work out, you know. Yeah, it's not just a feeling. Even a short burst of exercise, like even 10 minutes, that can increase BDNF a lot. Oh, wow. So I don't need to be training for a marathon to get the benefits. You don't need to. Even quick workouts can get those BDNF levels up. Mm, And aerobic exercise, like running and swimming, are great. Yeah. But if you combine that with something that challenges your coordination, like dancing or tennis, that can be even more effective. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it gives your brain a double dose of stimulation. And, you know, I always feel like I can learn new things more easily after I exercise. Is there like a, a connection there? Absolutely. After you work out, your BDNF levels are higher and you have increased blood flow to the brain. Oh. Yeah. So if you really want to boost your learning, try hitting the books or even listening to a podcast right after you exercise. Wow. I'm going to try that. I need to reorganize my schedule so I can take advantage of all that brain power after a workout. Maybe I should download the Care Clinic app to help me plan it all out. So we've been talking about how great BDNF is for your brain. Yeah. But you might be wondering how it all works, like at a cellular level. You know what? You're right. I am a little curious about that. Okay. Well, imagine BDNF as like a key. Okay. That unlocks these specific doors in your brain. Right. And those doors are called receptors. They sit on the surface of your brain cells. So BDNF needs those receptors to like actually get inside the brain cells to do its work. Exactly. And there are different types of receptors. Each one has its own special role. Mm -hmm. One of the most important ones is called TRKB. PRKB. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier. And it's basically like the welcome mat for BDNF. Okay. It lets BDNF in so it can do all that good stuff. Mm. When BDNF binds to TRKB, a whole bunch of good things start happening inside the brain cell. Like the new neuron growth, Mm -hmm. stronger connections, better memory. All of that. So TRKB is basically the keyhole for the BDNF key. That's a great way to put it. There's another receptor, though. Oh. It's called P75 and TR. And it does something a little different. It's more involved in um, regulating cell death and survival. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it helps to keep your brain functioning properly. Mm. So it's like a delicate balance between all of these different things going on. It really is. And then you also have to remember that BDNF itself is pretty complex, too. Right, right. Didn't you say there were eight promoters that control BDNF production? Like light switches or something. Exactly. And one of those switches is responsible for producing the type of BDNF that's really good at helping you learn new things. Oh, wow. So that's why studying after a workout is so effective. Yes. Our lifestyle and habits can actually influence which types of BDNF our brain makes. That's incredible. And this is why it's so important that we keep researching BDNF. 
the more we learn about it, the better we can address brain-related issues. Like what kind of issues? Well, things like neurodegenerative diseases, even mental health disorders. Wow. It's amazing that we're able to do so much to support brain health these days. It is. We've been talking a lot about exercise. But are there any other things we can do to boost our BDNF? Aside from hitting the gym, I mean. That's a good question. Is there anything? Well, exercise is great for BDNF, but it's not the only thing. Yeah. Your diet is really important, too. Diet. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown that a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants can be very helpful for boosting your BDNF. Oh, okay. So like salmon, walnuts, blueberries, things like that. Exactly. All that good stuff. So a brain-boosting diet is basically the same as a heart-healthy diet. Pretty much. It's about giving your brain the nutrients it needs. Okay. And I'll give you a pro tip. Curcumin can help to increase BDNF too. Curcumin? What is that? It's the active compound in turmeric. Turmeric. Like the spice? Yes. You can add it to your food. Or you can even have a cup of golden milk before you go to sleep. Oh, I love golden milk. Yeah, it's great. And don't forget about sleep. Sleep. Yeah, getting enough sleep is essential for BDNF production. It gives your brain time to rest and consolidate all the new connections you made during the day. So exercise, diet, sleep, it's all connected. Exactly. You want to live a holistic lifestyle that supports your well-being. That's how you optimize your BDNF and keep your brain sharp. Wow. This has been really eye-opening. It has. I feel like I'm learning so much about BDNF. Good. But before we wrap up, I wanted to circle back to something you mentioned before. Sure. About the genetic variation that can affect BDNF. Oh, you mean the VAL66 met mutation? Yes, that one. What is that exactly? So it's a small change in the gene that makes BDNF. Okay. And unfortunately, it makes it harder for some people to produce BDNF, yeah. and it's harder for their brains to transport it efficiently. Oh, no. <laughs> so does that mean if you have this mutation, you're just stuck with low BDNF? Not at all. Your genes aren't everything, you know. Oh, good. Yeah, while the mutation can present some challenges, your lifestyle still plays a major role. Okay, that's good to hear. And actually, some research has shown that healthy habits like exercise and a good diet might be even more important for people with the VAL66 met mutation. So it's even more important for them to prioritize those brain-boosting activities. Exactly. It's all about empowering yourself with knowledge hmm. and then making informed choices that support your brain health. Regardless of our genes. Exactly. That's really encouraging to know. It is. It means we have a lot more control over our brain health than we might think. We really do. Well, we've covered so much ground today. We have. But we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back to learn even more about the world of BDNF. And while we're gone, why don't you explore the Care Clinic app? It's got tons of resources to help you stay motivated on your journey to a healthier brain. We've been talking about all these amazing things that BDNF does in our brains. It is pretty amazing, right? It is. But where exactly is all this happening? Is it throughout the whole brain or just certain parts? It's definitely more concentrated in specific areas. Like where? Well, one of the most important ones is the hippocampus. The hippocampus. Mm -hmm. Think of it like your brain's memory filing cabinet. It helps us form new memories and find our way around. Mm -hmm. And BDNF is all over the hippocampus. It makes those connections between neurons stronger. Ah, so that's why BDNF is so important for learning and remembering. Exactly. But it's not just the hippocampus. Oh, there are more. There's also the cortex. The cortex. Mm -hmm. It's the outer layer of your brain involved in thinking, planning, all that good stuff. Mm. BDNF helps keep those neurons healthy so we can keep learning throughout our lives. Wow, so it's like BDNF is working on multiple levels. It is. And we can't forget about the basal forebrain. Okay, what does that one do? It's involved with attention, motivation, and even mood. BDNF helps it function properly, keeps us focused and feeling good. Wow, so no matter what we're doing, BDNF is there to support us. Exactly. It's a reminder of how interconnected our brains are. It really is. This has been such a fascinating look into the world of BDNF. I'm glad you think so. I feel like I understand my brain so much better now. Mm. But before we go, are there still some unanswered questions about BDNF? Oh, there are tons. Researchers are still trying to figure out so much. Like what? Well, one thing they're looking into is personalized approaches to boosting BDNF. We know that things like our genes, lifestyle, age, they all play a role. Right. So it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. It's more like personalized medicine, yep. but for our brains. Exactly. 
And another really interesting area of research is the role of BDNF in mental health disorders. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, it could potentially hold the key to new treatments for things like anxiety and depression. That would be amazing. It would. There's just so much potential with BDNF. Well, Jones, this has been absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Of course. It's been my pleasure. I feel like I've learned so much about how to keep my brain healthy. And for everyone listening, even small changes to your daily routine can make a huge difference when it comes to supporting your BDNF and your brain health. Download the Care Clinic app to help you on your brain health journey. And that brings us to the end of our BDNF exploration. We hope you enjoyed learning about this amazing little protein and how it can impact your life. Until next time, take care of yourselves and those amazing brains of yours.